I'm Eric Smith, and this is the Low Budget Review Show. And today, I want to talk about uh, one of the best books I've read in a long time. Um, and that is Grunt Life by Weston Oaks. It's a Task Force Ombra novel. Uh, this is published by Solaris, uh, who've been putting out some really good stuff lately. So, um, as I said, this is one of the best books I've read in a long time, and um, uh, most of what I read, I think, is pretty good. Uh, I got out of the habit of forcing myself to finish a book that I wasn't enjoying, uh, something I used to do. I felt if I started a book, I had to finish it, um, but I realized there's too many good books out there to waste time on stuff that I, I don't like, so if I start reading something and I'm not getting into it, call it quits. Um, so most of what I read, uh, well, pretty much everything I read, everything I finish anyway, is something that I enjoy. But there are certain levels to that. You know, some are pretty good, enjoyable enough. Um, but then you get those books that uh, are just fantastic. And uh, this is one of them, Grunt Life. Uh, I, I, I put off um, eating. I put off going to sleep. Uh, I put off going to work for as long as possible. Um, I have flex hours at work so I can go in uh, pretty much any time as long as I'm there by 5 o'clock uh, in the evening. I work second shift. and um, Normally I'll go in a little earlier so that I can leave a little earlier. Um, but while I was reading this, I was getting to work just before 5 o'clock because I did not want to put this book down. Um, and what this book is about is a gentleman by the name of Benjamin Mason. Um, he tells the story. He's the narrator. Uh, he's a soldier and excuse me, he's suicidal. Uh, the book actually starts with him preparing to kill himself. Um, by jumping off a bridge and this guy shows up and tells uh, Benjamin Mason that he's already dead and points out a fire across the city and he says uh, when that fire's investigated they're gonna find a body that matches your height and weight and everything and when they check the dental records if they check DNA it's all gonna match you um, and that's how Benjamin Mason gets recruited into Task Force Ombra, um, which is a uh, task force that's put together by uh, the Ombra Corporation to uh, fight a pending alien invasion. Uh, it's a task force that's made up of suicidal soldiers, uh, everybody in it. Um, has problems, PTSD or whatever, and they're all suicidal, and they're given this sort of second chance. Uh, basically, they're said, if you want to die, why not die for something? Um, the people at the Umber Corporation, Task Force Umber, the people that run it, uh, know, essentially know, that there's an alien invasion coming. Um, there are already scouts, whatever you want to call them, here on Earth, uh, digging up information on humans and the planet and everything, and sending it to their uh, alien overlords. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So the first part of the book is uh, Mason's recruitment and then training, and then you get to the fighting the aliens part, maybe halfway through or so. Uh, but it's all fantastic. Um, the characters are great. You've got Mason. You've got the guy that recruited him, who Mason refers to as Mr. Pink, because uh, he reminds him of Steve uh, Steve Buscemi from uh, Reservoir Dogs. Um, you've got the other recruits, the people that make up the little the little group that that Mason is in, and. Um, they're all just they're interesting characters and um, 
the situations are fascinating. Uh, and one of the things that uh, Mr. Oakes does here is, um, well, this book is set now, essentially. Um, it's military science fiction, and I'm not a huge fan. I have read some military science fiction. Most of what I've read is set in the future. It seems to be sort of uh, naval fiction in space, uh, at least what I have read. This takes place present day, and uh, Weston Oaks has a lot of uh, pop culture references, uh, at least in the first part, and um, a lot of things that are in the headlines right now, and that gives it an immediacy. Uh, this isn't something that um, is in some future that we're never going to live to see. <coughs> this, is, this is taking place on our Earth at this time um, which uh, really makes it compelling in my opinion uh, Weston Oaks is um, in the military let me see I don't want to get this wrong do, 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 do. this is from his biography in the back it says uh, he is a military veteran with 29 years of military service so I think the military stuff in this is very accurate. Um, and there's a lot of guns, a lot of uh, military equipment, but it doesn't get bogged down. He's not breaking down each little thing and being overly descriptive as some uh, military fiction authors can be. Uh, he tells you the weapons they're using, uh, some of the other things I don't give away, some of the stuff that they the, the grunts get to use in their fight against the alien the aliens um, but uh, it, it, it the story doesn't get bogged down with all that military jargon military description it just moves at such a great pace this really was a, a page turner as they say um, and as I mentioned I didn't want to put it down I just wanted to keep on reading I wanted to see what was going to happen um, it, it was very compelling. Uh, it's probably the best word I can think of. It's it's a compelling read. Uh, the uh, Benjamin Mason, even though he's the narrator, he's the hero of the story. He's not a perfect character. Uh, I mean, right off the bat, he's suicidal, and some people would say that that's a huge character flaw. Um, he has his reasons, uh, of course. I suppose anyone who's suicidal has their reasons. Uh, whether or not they're good reasons is always up for debate. But uh, uh, but Mason is definitely a flawed character. Um, wow, I uh, something I want to say, but I always I'm always afraid to spoil too much about the book, so uh, I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> uh, his um. I will say he's 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 not the leader of his squad, which I think is interesting. Uh, you would think the main character, the hero of the story, would be the leader, but he's not. He um, his uh, sort of rival-ish kind of guy is the squad leader, and Mason is up front. He's like he's a good leader. He doesn't like him as a person, but he's a good leader. He thinks he's the one for the position. Um, which is, is a nice character turn, I think. That's it's not something you're necessarily going to see. Uh, usually, if the main character isn't isn't the leader, then they really they don't like the leader, and they think the leader shouldn't be the one in charge. Um, at least, again, in my bit of uh, military sci-fi uh, reading, that's what I seem to come across. Um, so the aliens in this are an interesting group. Uh, they're sort of different factions of the aliens. Uh, the ones, the, the scouts that you see early on in the book, and then the, the full invasion force that shows up. Um, hope that's not a spoiler. We do get invaded. <laughs> um, interesting creatures. Um, the way they fight is interesting. Um, it's uh, 
hard to talk about because I don't want to give you any spoilers. Um, but uh, Mr. Oak's writing style is uh, is is crisp and clean and, and quick. Uh, again, it doesn't get bogged down. Um, even non-military sci-fi or any other genre can. Uh, you have those authors that really get uh, really get verbose and sort of bog things down. Um, you know, nothing wrong with uh, some descriptive prose, but there are some people that overdo it. Uh, that is not the case here. Um, I was just really blown away by this book. And I got to uh, speak with the author online, and um, he tells me that there are going to be some more Task Force Ombra novels. Um, don't know how many, but I am definitely looking forward to uh, whatever he does next as far as this goes. He also has a series um, called SEAL Team 666. I haven't had the opportunity to read one of those yet, um, but I'm definitely going to be picking those up and reading them. If they're any, if, if they're even half as good as this, they're going to be worth reading. Uh, so, I wanted to uh, get that out there. This is uh, relatively new. I picked it up at Barnes & Noble, so I was very happy to see uh, Western Oaks with a book on the shelves at the bookstore. Um, and I uh, just got it not too long ago, a month or so ago, I think. Um, as of the time of this recording. I say things like that. I just got it a month ago, but you could be watching this a year from the time I recorded it. Uh, but anyway, um, so I highly, highly, highly recommend Grunt Life by Weston Oaks. Uh, great sci-fi, great military stuff in here, just all around great storytelling. It's such a good book. Um, I'm going to try to put a link in the description uh, for Amazon. In case you can't find it at the bookstore or can't get out to the bookstore, you can pick it up online, of course, uh, as with most of these things that I talk about. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I say read it. Come on, if you're going to read anything. And it's, uh, let's see, 420 pages, but they flew by. I've read books half the size that took me twice as long. This is uh, just fantastic. I can't, I can't praise this enough. Um, Grunt Life by Weston Oaks. Pick it up. Um, as always, please put any comments, questions, or corrections in the comments section down below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Because um, I really want people to to support these things that I love and, and, and buy these books and the movies and games and things that I talk about. Um, so that's it for this episode of the Low Budget Review Show, and read more books.